Ah. Hello bleepers, how the devil are you? something slightly different today um, and in this video I'm going to try and outline why I believe metal detecting and five very very specific factors that can only be found in metal detecting well all together can have a very very real impact on our mental health and general well-being I've tried to research the points in this in this video as objectively as possible it's difficult because I know subjectively, um, I know how much personally metal detecting has helped me through dark times, through depression and through anxiety. And on top of that, twinned with that, is the sheer amount of ex-soldiers with PTSD, um, just other people that you know suffer from anxiety and depression, who I've also spoken to, who also agree that it's helped them through some very, very dark places. I urge anybody to go forth and research the points in this video themselves. All of the professional articles which I'm quoting from, some I am, some I'm not, um, will be linked in the description below so you can go and have a look yourselves. Guys, I'm not a, a physician and even though the research I've done uh, on this video comes from a professional place, um, if you are suffering from anxiety or depression in, in any way, shape or form, please go and see a physician, please go see a counsellor, go see uh, a GP. And I'm not a counsellor either, so please don't ask me for any psychological advice. I'm just not in a place or position where I can do that. By all means, contact me, talking to me about the, the, you know, the, the positive benefits of metal detecting, what you also believe. Actually, even better, if you, if, if you want to create a conversation, um, just in the, in the comments below, Please just you know talk about it there if, if metal detecting has helped you in any way. But again, please don't lean on other people if you if you need help. Um, only professional people can do that for you. So here is why I feel metal detecting is so good for the mind, and it's five very unique factors. Now our brains are still hardwired to be on the lookout for predators and the brain's whole process is of course the survival of the whole. Now hundreds of thousands of years ago our main concerns were eat, um, procreate and not die. Pretty simple by today's standards. Our systems would be flooded with adrenaline and cortisol readying ourselves to fight the foe, leg it or prepare ourselves for the old rumpy pumpy. Whatever its concern at the time, the brain's function is to keep the body alive. Now if we had achieved what we needed, if we had um, defeated that lion or legged it from that lion, then the chemicals would eventually subside and would come down to our resting and normal state. Now the problem is, is that the, the world has moved on so quickly around us, but we still possess these primal processes in our brains. The evolutionary processes can't be made that quickly. So when we see something as a, a, a threat in this world, the whole fight or flight process kicks in again. Adrenaline is dumped and cortisol is activated. Someone annoyed you at work? Cortisol. Someone cut you up in traffic? Adrenaline. We're still using those primal instincts in our modern world, where our brain perceives many different threats for information and acts accordingly. And if this continues over and over and over, we can become anxious. And what's worse is that we, we hold on to our stresses now, whereas in the past, if you had defeated the, the foe or, or you had legged it from the foe, then everything would come back down to its resting state. So we can probably say that our modern stresses are a natural response to something that metaphorically has big teeth and is a bit bitey. The thalamus in our brains prepares our bodies to fight or run. Signals are sent out to the uh, muscles and the major organs. Stress hormones are released from the adrenal glands. Adrenaline and cortisol are pumped into our system to keep us hypervigilant. More adrenaline is dumped to reduce pain. The heart pumps quicker to push blood around the system. But it's just a red bill that's come through the door or a final notice or, or a parking ticket. Our brains can't tell the difference between the two things and again, as I've mentioned, the brain's whole purpose is of the protection of the whole. It doesn't care what the threat is, it's just telling us that there is a threat or something which is perceived to be a threat. The outcome is still exactly the same. Now if we repeat this over and over it can cause problems for our bodies and minds and, and, and continual stresses can, can weaken our immune systems and through repetition we're deepening those neurological pathways through memory and we're making it easier to happen the next time something does happen. Th these are actual pathways we create in the brain which, which come about through habit and, and repetitive motion that can actually be tracked 
connect um, through science. It, it's, it's a memory thing, it's, it's, it's doing something over and over, it becomes a habit. But the good news is, the really good news is, it, it can also be reversed. That's the problem sometimes, I think, with anxiety and depression. You just think that you are there and the, 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 there's, no, there's no way out of that place. There's, the, you are just stuck in this place and it, this stuff can be reversed through, through, through professional help. But for me, personally, this is the point where metal detecting comes in. So we've mentioned that the whole function of the brain is to keep the body alive and well. And there's certain evolutionary patterns that were, that, uh, were used a, a, a long time ago which can be transposed positively to this modern day. And one of them is the activation of dopamine. Now dopamine plays a major part with reward motivated behavior in the brain. And dopamine along with serotonin, oxytocin and endorphins are the neurotransmitters that cause <coughs> happiness. Now the thinking is that we would get a good dose of dopamine every time the brain perceived us doing something which was good for the whole. So for example, back in the day we would get a little drop of dopamine every time we found nuts. Nuts are good. Nuts keep us alive. They've done this to squirrels. They found out that squirrels get like a teeny little, teeny little drop of, of dopamine. And that's how they found out how this kind of like particular evolutionary function is, is so good for humans as well. So every time you find a nut on the floor, you get a little drop of happiness. Now we can transpose this uh, primal um, uh, function to a modern world where it now has other purposes. Let's take metal detecting. Every time we find a good item, we get a little drop of dopamine. That's why it feels good to find stuff. Our brains literally reward us with a little hit, but it goes even further than that. Ivan Pavlov realized he could get his dogs to salivate every time he rang a bell. To do this, he would ring the bell and feed the dogs. Now, after a while, the dogs begin to associate the ringing of the bell to being fed. Now, this experiment outlined the whole idea behind classical conditioning and opened up many ways in, in which um, certain triggers created certain responses in us humans as well. So every time we hear the bell, in this instance, the bell being a, a good target on the metal detector, we are through repetition conditioning ourselves through those neurological processes to get a little um, hit of dopamine every time we hear it. Uh, exactly the same conditioning as Pavlov's dogs who would salivate when they heard the bell. And consistent drops of dopamine over an extended period are really, really, really good for our mental health. Left, right, left, right, swinging the coil slowly, over and over again, left to right. Once you've watched this video, um, do a little bit of investigation into mindfulness or meditation. Um, mindfulness especially, I'd say, while you know, because concerning you know the discussion on metal detecting, it's basically something that the Buddhists have done for thousands and thousands of years, and it's become like a uh, you know a buzzword in our society, and rightly so because it's helped people out um, a hell of a lot. There's so many papers, I think it's five a day at the moment, which are being released on the positive effects concerning mindfulness um, to, to people's psychology and mental health. So much so that doctors, instead of going straight down that antidepressant route, they're now considering and, and maybe kind of recommending mindfulness and meditation before they, ha they, you know, they take that step. Certainly in cases with people with mild depression and anxiety. And essentially, when we metal detect, that is essentially what we're, we're, we're doing. We're, we are, a, a, a portion of our consciousness is is concentrating on the, the sweeping backwards and forwards of the coil but at the same time it's um, it's engaged with the tones which are coming back to us and this is the thing with meditation and mindfulness it's 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 typically and traditionally a concentration on on the breath or, or a bell um, and, and then the idea is is, is if you, you carry on concentrating you keep on coming back to it the chattering monkey they call it um, in, in Eastern traditions will will subside it will stop talking because it can't talk whilst you're concentrated on one other thing and after a while once you 
you carry on concentrating through that left and right process and, and looking for those tones. The over analytical um, considering brain, the, the, the thinking mechanism which is the brain subsides slightly because the concentration's gone to another place, right? So you're not so caught up in here, yak, 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 talk, 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 because again, a, a portion of your consciousness is, is, is elsewhere, that being us listening to tones and, and the swinging of the detector. This is the foundation of um, meditation, prayer, and cognitive uh, behavioral therapy. We automatically do that in, in our hobby. Um, and, and, and again, it's, it's like dopamine, the continual process of this is just so good for our brains. That's why people, they recommend that you meditate daily. What we're doing essentially is uh, moving meditation. People still think that meditation consists of people sitting there going om in Eastern traditions um, every day until the sun goes down. But this, uh, the good thing about mindfulness is it, 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 it transposed that idea to a modern world and just doing uh, the, these concentration exercises in, in everything you do. And again, that's what we're already doing when we're swinging a detector. This slow and deliberate movement backwards and forwards slowly. This is the foundation of uh, Tai Chi and Qi Gong and all of those other forms of moving meditation. And the benefits of this are massive. There's an article below, check out the article below. I've picked one out and hopefully that will give you the information you need. But honestly, give it a click and, and, and read through it, it's fascinating. And again, coming back to detecting, I do feel that that, that continual um, repetitive slow movement whilst the, uh, the concentration on, on the target, shush you fool, um, the concentration on those targets um, are giving us a same um, neurological effect as um, meditation and mindfulness. You, you'll understand this if you've detected for a long while. Sometimes you may not feel happy at the end of a metal detecting session because you haven't found anything, but you will feel at peace. There's this feeling that comes after metal detecting. It's just, yeah, I'm, I'm not happy I didn't find anything, but there's definite peace there, isn't there? Now, if you do this and continue this, again, coming back, creating those pathways in our brains. If you continue this over a long period of time, the effects on your well-being can be remarkable. Again, check out the uh, link in the description below, my friends. And the fourth unique factor is exercise. Now, we all know the benefits of exercise, or at least we all should know the benefits of exercise. So I'll do this slightly differently because um, I can't, there's, there's so much to quote here. I'm quoting off the website. Uh, again, there's a link in the description below, but just listen to this. A recent report from the Macmillan Cancer Charity outlines that getting 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week, that's about two and a half hours, could save 37,000 lives a year and could also eliminate 300,000 cases of type 2 diabetes a year. It also helps keep away heart disease, helps you sleep better, and of course, helps with your mental health. Actually, let's just go into the stats here. This is crazy. This is something that we just do naturally whilst we're metal detecting. We, we're just walking, right? We're exercising, light exercise. Okay, um, not brilliant cardio, but it is exercise. It helps you stay a healthy weight. It increases good cholesterol, reduces blood pressure, builds healthy muscles and bones, improves balance, reduces the risk of falls. If everyone in England, and that's just England, right? I know you, I have I followers all around the world, um, got the message about uh, uh, being active, just England, we're a teeny little country. It could prevent 36,815 people, that's a very definite number, isn't it? Dying prematurely, because I've got the statistics from the, the, the years previously. Um, 12,061 people going to hospital for emergency coronary heart disease treatment. Uh, 6,735 cases of breast cancer. 4,719 cases of um, colorectal cancer. Uh, 294 1,730 cases of diabetes. In addition, people that stay active get less stressed, they sleep better, they feel better, have a 30% lower risk of getting depressed, 30%, that's a biggie. Keep their minds sharp, improve their memories, reduce their risks of having dementia. And this is something, This is we do this naturally in a hobby anyway. And the mind, wow, the mind. The mental health charity, Mind, 
coincidentally, have recently completed a study and have documented their findings in the report, Ecotherapy, the Green Agenda for Mental Health. And the chief medical officer stated that physical activity is effective in the treatment of clinical depression and can be as successful as psychotherapy or medication, particularly in the long-term Department of Health 2004. There is therefore a good argument for recommending it as the primary treatment for mild to moderate depression. Exercise has fewer adverse effects than drugs and is an ideal treatment for people experiencing a combination of physical and mental health problems. Exercise, something that we do naturally in a hobby, really is blooming good for you. And this comes to the uh, final factor, the fifth factor, which is environment, which is related to exercise, which what we just we just spoke about then. Um, when I researched this one, this was this was a, a a fascinating one because we already know that being in cities and you know things like that will stress us out, and we already know that this being here is going to is going to calm us down. But I wasn't quite aware how good it is for you environment I, I, just, I just knew I felt better personally when I'm walking in places like this I know that it helps me I know it does but just going into it a little bit um, it's it's fascinating and again it ties in with exercise again I'm gonna link to a article below you got you got to check this stuff out guys if you stick the, the other factors the the five factors that you know what the brain does its process it's you know the fact that it's it's here to help us and then um, uh, uh, exercise and then the dopamine the continual okay shush you're talking you're, you're blabbering now man edit this bit out empirical evidence shows exposure to nature has substantial mental health benefits equally participating in physical activity is known to result in positive physical and mental health outcomes so what happens when you combine the two research at the university of essex has shown that engaging in physical activities while viewing pleasant green rural or urban pictures enhances mood improves self-esteem and reduces blood pressure. It does so to a greater extent than exercise alone or exercise while viewing images of less pleasant rural or urban environments. A further University of Essex study measured the effects of 10 green exercise activities including walking, cycling, horse riding, fishing, canal boating and conservation activities, no metal detecting, missed a trick there didn't they? It, it involved 263 participants and found that they were significantly less angry, depressed, confused and tense after engaging in green exercise. Self-esteem levels also improved significantly. These findings are supported by a number of other studies. Terry Hartig argues that nature can restore deficits in attention arising from overwork, over concentration and make people feel and think better. He found that walking in a nature reserve reduced blood pressure more than a walk along a treeless urban street. I'm gonna add a sixth factor. I'm just gonna riff with this. It's, it's, it's these, it's these, these things. When we're metal detecting, we, we are not sat behind a computer or um, behind our phones staring at a screen uh, uh, and staring and involving ourselves psychologically in so much conflict and and just, just every bad thing in the world is right there at your fingertips you open it up I can open up the news now and go wow oh uh, Okay, I'm going to turn that off right now. Just to continue, continuing squabbling. It's moved on so quickly, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to link another article below. And it, it, the article is about how tech giants, the people that have created this stuff in Silicon Valley, in, in California, and and China, are not letting their kids anywhere near it because they know of the the negative psychological effects it has on the brain. The people that invented it are like, I ain't using it. I'm not going anywhere near it. I'm not gonna let my kids anywhere near it. These things are so destructive. You, you, you involve yourselves in so many quarrels and arguments and politics and religions and everybody's just at each, 
everybody's throats all the time and there's no conclusion to it because everybody thinks they're right everybody thinks that their point is the right point so these it just goes on and on and on and on and on whereas 20 years ago you never you you, you just kind of got on with your life and, and previously before that you got on with your life people and I, I i'm exactly the same i can get so involved in that thing you know so much time can just disappear and go and it's it ain't right, man. <laughs> it ain't right. It's not right. It's this is right. That noise is right. And they make them so addictive, you know. There's all of these kind of like companies really get into the psychological profiling of the whole scroll system. The guy that invented the whole scroll system. The point of that is that the scroll is never ending, so there's never any conclusion. So you just keep on scrolling, man. <laughs> It's, it's created to be addictive and whilst the internet has brought positive communities like and the opportunity for me to share this video with you which is amazing and I, I, I'm eternally grateful and thankful for that it's bringing some nasty stuff as well I don't even need to say what that is you all of you everyone watching this video will have experienced something negative online at some point or seen something metal detecting takes us away from that it we're metal detecting you can't be facebooking whilst you're swinging backwards and forward hour after hour um and again we're in this we're in these beautiful environments it's those six factors all together which are very unique because you could say like in that study there you could say oh well fishing will give you those uh, factors because um, environment dopamine let's say every time you catch a fish you get a good feeling because bam you know but you don't really have exercise there do you because you're not moving like you are metal detecting and there's no repetitive movement left right left right it's these five or six now because i've just added one factors which make it so unique to the the mental health world the fact that we're in these environments the fact that we're exercising through walking in these beautiful places which we know is good because the studies have told us it's good whilst doing a repetitive movement left right listening concentrating on those bleeps concentrating going moving and you go down you dig you get your hands in the earth it's important as well and um, you, you, you hear that signal that perfect signal boom a little drop of dopamine a little a little drop of happiness um, and that's why I just think it's the most amazing thing uh, metal detecting for me personally and I just felt like I needed to make and share this video just just to kind of those people <laughs> shut up you fool those people that are having a difficult time and, uh, and do metal detecting a little bit or are thinking about getting into it then you know it could help you again I'm not a professional um, please don't come to me with those questions but look at the articles read the articles look at it all with an open mind um, and I sincerely hope it helps you in some way my friends thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next video